All right, it is 11 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Just want to say hello again and good morning to everyone. Welcome to the webinar, Let's Get Moving at the Library, Physical Activity Programs for Health. My name is Kimberly Brown Harden, and I'm the Northwest Regional Coordinator from the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Office. I'll be the host and question moderator today. Our presenter this morning is Dr. Noah Lindstra, Assistant Professor of Library and Information Studies from the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. I'd like to start off the webinar with a few announcements. If you have a question, just type it into the chat box on the upper left side of the screen. I'll be watching and will get your question to Noah as soon as there is a good opportunity. There should also be time near the end for questions. This session is about an hour, so you'll get one LEU for today. After the presentation has ended, please stay logged in to receive your LEU. I'll also be posting a link to a survey about today's presentation. Please fill out the survey to let us know how we're doing. Again, please stay logged in at the end of the presentation for access to your LEU, as well as the survey link. If you are watching an archived recording of this webinar, Instructions on how to obtain your LEU are in the video's description. If at any point during the webinar you experience any sound issues, please see the sound issues box just below the chat box on the left side of the screen. If there is a global sound issue, we will announce it in the chat box. If you are unable to resolve the sound issues you are experiencing, we are recording the meeting and you can watch it online after the meeting has ended. Again, if there is a global sound issue, we will make an announcement in the chat box. And now, without further ado, I will turn the presentation over to Noah. Thank you, Noah. Great. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Uh, thanks for uh, inviting me and setting this up. And I'm just uh, really thrilled to be talking with you all. Um, and thanks also to everyone who filled out the, the pre-webinar uh, survey. Um, it's great to see that we have people from all over the country, um, as well as all over Indiana here today. Um, and so I wanted to start, actually, by just uh, introducing myself to you. Uh, so I am uh, professor at the Library and Information Studies program at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Um, and as part of both my, my research and service uh, initiative, uh, community engagement initiative, I started this Let's Move in Libraries project in fall of 2016. Um, and the first big initiative that we did um, in spring of 2017 was a survey of uh, librarians uh, in the US and Canada asking them um, First, did they offer movement-based programs? And second, uh, if they did, what impacts were those programs having? Um, and I was just uh, amazed at the response. I thought I would get maybe, maybe a few dozen people responding. I ended up with over a 1,000 respondents uh, from all over the US and even as far north as Barrow, Alaska, um, as, this, as this image shows. Um, so over a 1,000 libraries reporting that they offer movement-based programs and intend to continue offering them. Um, and then uh, as part of that, uh, I've been doing this um, series highlighting uh, how, how different libraries move. Um, but I, um, yeah, so it's just, been, it's just been amazing. And so I've really become passionate about uh, the power of movement in libraries. Um, and this is something that we really need more of. This is not just um, some, something to do just, just, just um, willy-nilly. Um, there's a huge need for more physical activity, um, not only in the US, where according to the most recent data from the World Health Association, 40% um, of American adults are not getting adequate physical activity, um, but a huge global crisis as well. Um, in our increasingly sedentary societies, people need to move their bodies more, and we can't just rely on gyms uh, and rec centers to give us the, the access that we need. Um, and so that led former First Lady Michelle Obama to uh, develop her Let's Move campaign from 2010 to 2016, uh, and working with the U.S. Institute for Museum and Library Services, um, she actually developed a, a side project focused on increasing physical activity in museums. Uh, and so I thought, uh, if museums can do this, if museums can promote physical activity, why not, why not libraries as well? 
and that's really where where this project all got started. Um, as the Obama presidency started to wind down in 2016, I thought we need to really uh, see what's happening in libraries. Um, and the other context of this is the World Health Organization, which has really um, embraced uh, increasing physical activity as, as one of the most important global health issues of our day, um, uh, comparable to issues relating to addiction, of opioids and smoking. Um, the World Health Organization puts physical activity right at the very top of, of the global health issues. Um, and so they have this, uh, this big campaign that I'd encourage you to take a look at, Let's Be Active. Uh, every everyone, everywhere, every day. Um, and so that what I'm going to be talking about today is what you can do at your library to increase physical activity. Um, uh, and, and before I get into these uh, seven ways that you can increase physical activity, I want to I wanna just tell everyone uh, this does not rest solely on your shoulders as librarians. Um, the places that are really doing this the best uh, do so in collaboration with community partners, um, which is exactly what uh, the U.S. Institute of Museums and library services want you to be doing. Um, uh, their new Community Catalyst initiative challenges museums and libraries to transform how they collaborate with their communities. Um, and, and I think uh, this is a great way where uh, most librarians, we're not, we're not fitness instructors, uh, although some of us are, um, but, we, but we can certainly um, improve uh, physical fitness through community collaborations by becoming those community catalysts that, that lead to um, healthier communities. Um, and the other thing I want to say, just as a preface, is to do it safely. Um, the question that I get asked every time I've ever given a presentation on this topic is, what happens if someone injures himself? Um, and so the first thing I would say is, uh, is relax. Um, it, it, it basically almost never happens. I've talked to libraries that have offered weekly fitness classes for over 10 years um, and have reported no injury at all, um, uh, but, uh, but you do want to do it safely and one way to protect yourself is to uh, formulate a waiver of liability that all participants sign. Um, and so I've been gathering uh, over 30 examples of these waivers of liability that you can download for free at my website um, and use at your library, uh, so, so do it safely. Uh, so, oh, uh oh, uh, this uh, looks like things uh, came in a little bit wonky, but uh, hopefully this will, I'm going to be talking about seven ways libraries get us moving. Um, and, and basically, this is going to be a buffet of different options. Uh, so, um, I'm going to be quickly running through seven ways that libraries get us moving. Um, and then uh, I, can, I can talk in more depth about. Um, uh, but the, the, the main thing is I want to see many more headlines like this one. Um, so this is from Goshen, Indiana, um, and, and the local newspaper uh, ran a story in June of 2018, Library News, Goshen offers outdoor adventures, hip-hop dance class, um, and so we, we can do this. Uh, it's already happening, um, it's, and, and so we can, yeah, this is, this is something that um, uh, we, can, we can all do more of in our libraries. Um, and, um, and yeah, it looks like some of the fonts may, may not come in, but the first strategy is to make movement part of existing programs. So you don't necessarily need to, uh, um, uh, yeah, kind of create a whole new slew of programs. Uh, if you're short-staffed, um, you can, you can try to find ways to, to incorporate movement into what, to, what you're already offering. Um, and so this is just an example of, uh, in, in Wilmington, North Carolina, they've offered yoga story times, uh, since 2009. Uh, and it's become the most popular program that they offer. Um, it, yeah, they, they, they cannot offer enough yoga story times. There's always, uh, requests for more, um, and so it's, it's story times plus yoga, um, and Susan uh, Wood, now Susan Craven, um, is the, the librarian who started it, and she's since gone around and trained other members of her staff, as well as staff in the region, um, to do more yoga story times. Um, uh, and, and yeah, and, and another, if you're having some big event, uh, invite someone like a Zumba instructor. So uh, Queens Library in New York, they have an annual family family day, kind of family day celebration. Um, and so they decided to just invite a Zumba instructor. So in addition to providing parents uh, with kind of fun information, they also offer them uh, an opportunity to be physically active at the library to get together. 
Um, and of course, uh, with uh, you can also have literary themed physical activities. This is just a, a photo of some um, some uh, Harry Potter themed uh, uh, Nerf Nerf fight. Um, so you can you can definitely. And I just saw that the St. Louis County Library they're getting ready to to do another round of Harry Potter yoga. Um, uh, and so there's lots of ways to kind of make the the physical activity literary themed. Um, and just another example from Ohio of uh, the Busiris Public Library. They do a music, movement, and more program, um, which uh, which basically involves uh, kids uh, learning uh, about music appreciation, but but ending with a, a story. Um, and I just want to really uh, briefly highlight some some opportunities to incorporate physical activity into summer reading, because uh, I see, especially in summer reading, just a huge opportunity as well as a huge need. Um, and so I've seen a, a number of libraries that have uh, these ride to read or, or walk to read initiatives where uh, where kids and, and families earn extra points for the summer reading challenge if they ride a bike or walk to the library. Um, and so, um, yeah, so wear your helmet for a bonus ticket, um, just, just to kind of incentivize uh, physical activity during the summer. I've seen other libraries that will give um, summer reading participants extra points if they if they visit uh, local parks. Um, uh, and just an example from Indiana, uh, where the Eckhart Public Library, um, their summer read family program uh, invited the YMCA of DeKalb County to come down and do some Zumba for children in Auburn, Indiana. Um, and and so uh, I'm sure everyone's probably uh, even though summer 2019 may seem like it's uh, far away, it's gonna it's gonna be here sooner than you think. Um, and so I uh, especially with uh, the collaborative summer library program being focused on outer space, um, I really want to see us training like astronauts and libraries uh, in 2019. Um, and the good news is NASA has created a huge uh, array of resources to, to focus on how to train like an astronaut. Um, um, and, and the importance of physical activity and being physically active and physically fit to be able to engage in space exploration. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, um, resources on NASA's website that even have an app that you can use. Um, and so I really encourage you to think about doing Train Like an Astronaut programs during summer reading in 2019. Um, and don't forget about adults uh, when you're thinking about incorporating movement into programs. Um, uh, one, one of the things that I've been really uh, interested in is this growth of walking book clubs. Um, and so just a few examples from Elgin, Illinois, as well as from Peoria, Illinois, that have successfully ran uh, or run uh, walking book clubs now for uh, for for a while. Um, and so it's um, yeah, it's it's uh, usually um, uh, either the, the the two main options are you either discuss the book at the library and then go walking together, or or discuss it while you walk. Um, but in either case, there's there's lots of opportunities to incorporate walking into your book club for adults. Um, and, and even more uh, experimentation, um, a, a library near me here in North Carolina, they have an outdoor explorer book club where they read nature-themed books um, and then meet up at, at local parks to go explore the parks as they as they discuss the books. Um, in this library in Connecticut, they have a healthy exchange book club um, where during the, the, the fall and spring, they meet at the library. But then in the summer, they, they go on these outdoor adventures. Uh, so this is a picture of some of the, the members of the book club learning pickleball together during during the summer. Um, so lots of opportunities to uh, make physical activity part of programs that you're already already offering in your library. Uh, and just finishing this module with uh, an example from Kokomo, Indiana, um, where the library is starting to try um, uh, a book it program, as they call it. Uh, and I see that someone is not getting the PowerPoint visual, so hopefully, hopefully others are, are seeing them. Yes, and, and uh, the PowerPoint is available online. Um, so I'm not sure why why the slides are not coming through, but um, I'm including the link here. Um, I'm I'm seeing the slides, so there may be may be a lag time. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and continue on. Hopefully, hopefully others are seeing seeing the slides. Um, the next. Uh, technique that libraries can use um, 
to uh, increase physical activity is do it for the sheer joy of being physically active. Um, and, and where libraries are doing this the most currently is in the realm of early literacy. Uh, so you may know that um, the American Library Association's Every Child Ready to Read initiative um, foregrounds the importance of play. Uh, so because of that uh, foregrounding of play and early literacy, um, libraries all over the country are doing things like this, this library in Brooklyn, um, where they're, they're really encouraging kids to be physically active uh, as they play at libraries. Um, here's a picture of parachute play, um, actually from that library in Barrow, Alaska that I mentioned um, earlier in my presentation. Um, but, but play is not just for kids. Uh, we all need to play, and we can all play play in libraries. Um, so here's an image of uh, a Nerf capture the flag for adults at a library in Oregon. Um, and even senior citizens playing in libraries. Um, uh, also at the Brooklyn Public Library, not only do they have play-based programs for kids, they also have a program called Library Lanes, um, where uh, senior citizens uh, form uh, Xbox bowling um, using Xbox Connect. Um, and they'll, they'll bowl together at the libraries and compete against uh, teams from other branches. So uh, play is not just for little kids. Play is for all of us. Um, and here's, a, here's just a, a quick example from Indiana, um, where the Bloomfield Eastern Green County Public Library has this uh, Golf for the Library fundraiser. Um, uh, and last year, they a earned um, $6,000. And, and this year, they're hoping to aim $10,000. Um, and so it's a fundraiser, but it's also encouraging this sense of playfulness um, and playful physical activity. Um, and just a few other examples of uh, a silent disco party at a library in New Jersey and an outdoor uh, kind of balance uh, obstacle course at a library in Alberta. Um, so lots of, lots of experimentation, lots of libraries trying different things to uh, recreate the library as, as, a, as a fun place to, to play for all ages um, and in that process encouraging more physical activity. Uh, so the third thing that you can do is to uh, increase physical activity is to develop new collections. Uh, so I'm sure many of you have probably heard of the Library of Things, where libraries are now not only checking out books and CDs, we're also checking out things like um, uh, gardening supplies and tools. Um, well, some libraries have really focused on what they can do to increase physical activity through, their, through these new collections. Um, and so this library in Idaho, um, and there's actually a video that I've made highlighting how this program works. So you can check out this video later um, to, to read about it. But basically, the ALSC Curiosity Creates funded this library in Idaho to develop a, a collection of circulating rec recreation materials, such as bocce balls um, and, uh, and basketballs. Uh, now they even have. Um, uh, bicycles um, that they check out, and it's hugely popular, uh, especially in the summer. Um, and it's also used by library staff to have fun uh, physical activity-based programs uh, as part of their summer reading um, initiatives. And yeah, just some pictures. Here's the library in Ontario that checks out uh, hula hoops, uh, badminton kits, um, a library actually from the United Kingdom, uh, Suffolk in the UK, uh, checks out sports and outdoor game equipment. Uh, and just a few other examples. Um, it's not just uh, some some libraries are even checking out exercise materials. This library in Smyrna, Georgia, you can check out things like kettleballs, resistance bands, um, other other things. Um, uh, a library in California checking out wireless activity trackers. Um, so lots of potential to develop new collections at your library to promote physical activity. Uh, and I just wanted to highlight uh, another Indiana example um, where in Pendleton, uh, Indiana, the library is excited to be a partner in, in the local bike share. Um, and so uh, the library is getting involved in helping to uh, promote uh, and spread this bike share initiative. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I just want to give a big shout out to Lynn Hobbs. Um, I think she's doing really amazing stuff in Pendleton. Um, and, a, and a local news story highlighted how um, the 
Pendleton Community Library in Indiana is being transformed into a food pantry, an after-school club, a community garden, and even a, even a fitness center, um, so highlighting the way that um, we're transforming our libraries to really support health and wellness in new, new ways uh, here in Indiana and across North America. Um, and I really hope that we find a way to bring the state park passes back to Indiana libraries. Um, I was really uh, disappointed and, and sad when I saw that the um, the state park passes were no longer going to be available to Indiana libraries um, because other places have really uh, used those uh, park passes to catalyze um, an enormous amount of uh, physical activity. Um, so in Colorado, Virginia, um, um, Georgia, uh, I, I've heard that they're trying to develop this in Montana as well. Uh, they're not only checking out park passes, they're also checking out uh, outdoor exploration kits that you can use to enhance your experience um, of the outdoors and I'm seeing in the chat that places that offer these are, are hugely popular so let's find a way to bring the state park passes back to Indiana and, and make them even more robust uh, the first thing that libraries are doing to uh, increase physical activity is actually developing new spaces um, in the libraries um, and these pictures are actually from school libraries so um, where I've seen, um, I'm actually working on an article right now on school libraries that have uh, participated in the, the Ride and Read or Read and Ride initiative, which basically um, it's uh, just uh, inviting students uh, to come to the library and, and read while also uh, uh, pedaling on a stationary bicycle. Um, and it's been hugely popular in libraries that have offered this. Um, um, and, I, and it's uh, a big trend in school libraries, but I think it's something that would also work really well in a public library context. Um, and, and yeah, so I, and I was excited to see uh, Noble County in Indiana is actually trying this out right now. Um, so um, uh, the Friends of the Library bought a stationary reading bike um, for the libraries, and, and they're going to try this out and see how successful it is. Um, and if it's, if it's a success, they're going to hopefully do, do more of them. Um, and some libraries, uh, this is all, and, and hopefully this won't um, uh, become a, a big thing, but some libraries are also really uh, thinking about how to have more active play spaces um, in their libraries. Uh, and, and some are really pushing the boundaries. Uh, so these images are from Philadelphia and Nashville, where the libraries have actually installed uh, children's climbing walls. Uh, so, so kids can literally climb the walls um, in these libraries. So some places are really, really pushing the boundaries here and so this is um, this is becoming uh, part of the best practice in public librarianship to find ways to en en encourage and support um, uh, f physical activity uh, and just another example from Roanoke Virginia where the library has a slide uh, right there by the by the circulation desk in the children's service area um, in San Antonio um, Five branches have uh, outdoor uh, fitness equipment, so um, you can you can do your uh, exercises on the equipment in front of the library. Um. Uh, and, and the fifth way that, that libraries are getting people outdo out, out, outdoors is to um, yeah, or get people physically active is to find ways to get people active outdoors. Um, and a great way to do that is by uh, starting a community garden. So here's just some pictures from the community garden at the Hancock County Public Library in Greenfield, Indiana, um, uh, and some pictures of people, uh, all the physical activity that's involved in, in gardening. Um, uh, here's a picture of the the, uh, the the one of the community gardens uh, at Cleveland, Ohio. Um, again, highlighting the, the physical activity dimensions of, of gardening uh, in libraries. Uh, the other main way that libraries are getting people active outdoors is through story walk initiatives. Um, and so here's just a, a picture of the ribbon cutting um, at, a, at a story walk in Dale, Indiana. Um, and if you're ready to try a story walk, I really uh, highly advocate for this video um, uh, highlighting how Stillwater, Oklahoma started their story walk. Um, and they got funding actually from the, the State Library of Oklahoma to support their story walk. So uh, consider uh, requesting funds from your state library. They, they may be able to give you the support you need for a story walk. I know um, here in North Carolina as well, the state library has been really supportive of, of story walk initiatives. 
Uh, but, but there's other ways to get people outdoors. Um, and so these are just two examples of libraries in Indiana that have 5K um, initiatives. Um, so in Morgan County, Indiana, they, every year they have their Dewey Dash uh, fundraiser. Uh, in the North Manchester Public Library in Indiana, they have their fantastic fund run. Uh, so lots of ways to, to get people active outdoors. Um, and the sixth way that the libraries get people active is by having just uh, fitness um, classes in libraries. And the library that's really leading leading the way forward in this area is Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, and the Nashville Public Library, they offer just a huge variety of, of exercise classes and, and, and branches throughout the city. Um, and so this, uh, I just pulled this from one of their uh, annual, annual reports uh, that states that last year, uh, Be Well at Nashville Public Library delivered 1,466 classes uh, such as yoga, Zumba, nutrition, and meditation to 18,000 Nashvilleans. Uh, so uh, it's not only focusing on physical activity, but also focusing on mental health and nutrition. But um, uh, having talked with a lot of their staff, uh, the physical activity programs are, are definitely among the most popular. Um, and they really cannot offer enough because there's always a demand for more of the yoga and Zumba that they, that they are already offering. And uh, it's happening here in Indiana as well. Um, here's a picture of a yoga class at the Elkhart, Indiana Public Library. And I really like this image. I actually made this uh, the cover photo of our, our Facebook account. So if you look up Let's Move in Libraries on Facebook, you'll see this picture from, from Elkhart. Uh, and yes, and lots of uh, lots of great partnership opportunities as well. Uh, so the Johnson County Public Library in Indiana, they they teamed up um, with the Humane Society of Johnson County to offer a yoga with kittens. Uh, so it was uh, it was a physical activity program, but it also hopefully encouraged people to consider uh, adopting uh, kittens and and yeah, getting people aware of um, the importance of the Humane Society. Um, and so lots of opportunities to to do this through community partnerships. Uh, another more pictures of yoga in Monroe County Public Library, where every Monday night uh, in, in Bloomington, the book cart becomes a yoga mat cart when, when they, they wheel out the, the yoga mats that they use for their free yoga for the community program. Um, and, and even, yeah, not, it's in small towns as well. So this is from the Ferdinand Branch Library down there in southern Indiana, where um, it's part of a collaboration with the Purdue Extension um, and the, the Tri-County YMCA. Um, uh, the library participated in, in these uh, fitness classes for older adults. So here's just a picture that Janice Potter, uh, the adult programming librarian down there at Ferdinand, sent me of one of their Go for Life programs that they offered just, just last month. So it's, it's not just big city. At small towns, um, there's a lot, and again, uh, especially when you're engaging in community partnerships, the possibilities are endless. Uh, and yeah, just uh, just another example of a small town. This is from Western Nebraska, a tiny town of about 500 people, where every Monday they do senior chair yoga from 1:30 to 2:30. And another example from a small town here, this time from Kansas, where um, as part of their summer reading program, a retired PE teacher comes down to the library every Thursday to do Fitness Thursdays, where the kids go out um, and, and do some, some physical activities with the retired PE teacher on the library lawn. Um, and and one one thing that I really love, and I'll, I'll, I I want to make sure to emphasize this because uh, this is one of my favorite programs, is to, uh, the library couch to 5K. Um, and so uh, these are the the Stickney Public Library, um, and and which is a suburb of Chicago. They just wrapped up their third annual couch to 5K program. And these are some pictures of some of the people that participated. Um, uh, in Madison County Public Library in Kentucky, they do an annual couch to 5K program, and it's a great way to uh, get your staff moving, get yourself moving, uh, but also uh, get your community to go and, and train for the 5K with you and, and get people uh, moving uh, together. Um, and I also want to give a, a quick shout out to uh, Megan Alexander, um, who's an Indiana librarian who did this uh, program on incorporating yoga into the library, actually for the Indiana State Library last year. And you can find that on the Indiana State Library's uh, YouTube channel. It's a great resource if you're thinking about yoga. 
Um, and the last thing I want to say, the last way that I've seen libraries um, increase physical activity in their communities is by being a model for others. Um, so are you out there uh, being active yourself? Are, are, are you encouraging your staff to be model for the community? Um, and, and there's lots of ways to do this. Um, uh, I'm, I'm part of a group on Facebook called Librarian to Run. Uh, they make t-shirts. Um, it's always a great conversation starter when I'm running around with my shirt um, and, and, and people say, wow, librarians run. I didn't know librarians run. I thought they only checked out books um, and, and wore cardigans. Um, and, uh, and, and, yeah, and another great way to do that is to, to develop a book bike program. Um, and uh, just wanted to share some photos of the book bike uh, that they have in Plymouth, Indiana. Um, and what a great way to model physical activity, uh, riding around your community on a, on a bicycle that's been um, uh, set up with a huge cart of books. Um, uh, I, I think that's just a tremendous way to, to model physical activity and, and the fact that librarians care about physical activity. Um, and, and I want to just also emphasize, it's not about looking a particular way. Um, it's not about getting a beach body or anything like that. Um, you can stay active at any size. Uh, as the National Institute on Health uh, point out, um, physical activity is safe for almost everyone. Um, and there's lots of great uh, resources out there about body positive physical activity. Um, just highlighting an example of Jessamine Stanley, who did a program on this for the Sacramento Public Library. Um, and in, in a lot of ways, um, if you if you don't have that stereotypical kind of um, gym rat body, um, you're the most important person to be modeling physical activity uh, because if, if if you're showing your community that you can do it, then then you're showing people that anyone can can do it. Um, and uh, if you want to read more about how to get yourself moving, um, I'd encourage you to take a look at this uh, resource uh, that Faith um, Brodigan, the director of the Kokomo Howard County Public Library here in Indiana, wrote about their staff summer wellness challenge. Um, and so it's a great resource, uh, and you can get it here on the public library's online website. Um, so start with your staff, start with yourself, get yourself moving, and then take your community along with you for the ride. Um, and so, oh, this, unfortunately, this did not come up. Uh, but again, just uh, the seven ways I've seen libraries getting the community moving is by making movement part of existing programs, uh, doing it for fun, uh, new collections, new spaces and infrastructures, uh, getting people active outdoors, um, having fitness classes at the library, and being a model for others. Um, so I hope that uh, you all will try something new. Um, and uh, I also just want to end by encouraging everyone to stay connected with me. Um, my email is simple. It's just my last name at uncg.edu. Um, we're on all the social medias um, and even on Pinterest, uh, although I don't have that listed here. So follow us, uh, uh, engage with us, share examples of what you're doing at your library. Um, uh, if, if all 68 of you emailed me with uh, something that you're going to try doing at your library, I would be absolutely thrilled um, and would be happy to give you uh, as much support as I'm able to. Um, and so really thank you all for your time. And now we have plenty of time for, for Q&A. Um, and so I haven't been uh, closely following the chat, but I know there's been a lot of great questions coming in. Um, let's see. So Lynn asked, asked a question. Um, is the philosophy that any physical activity is good, getting people moving in any way is good? Yeah, so Lynn, I would say um, and my philosophy um, and the philosophy of the, the World Health Organization is that uh, any any physical activity is good. Um, so from the public health perspective, um, any yeah, so any any physical activity is good. So that would be that would be my response. Um, let's see. Um, so Jenny says, uh, we run a half marathon fun run at our library, but it takes so much time to set up and manage that we are thinking of passing it to another organization. So Jenny, I actually think that's totally acceptable. Um, I think to pass a baton to another organization to uh, organize the half marathon and fun run, that would be, I would, I think that would be great uh, to kind of, and then you're kind of, uh, you're, you're passing the baton, but, but this, it's amazing to, to think that the library started this and maybe could continue to be an active partner in, in this initiative. Um, 
Uh, let's see, and, and let's see, I missed a question. There was a, a comment here on uh, on Wii, um, using the Wii. Um, and I think using the Wii, Xbox Connect, uh, there's lots of great ways to kind of uh, combine video gaming and physical activity. So yeah, there's lots of great ways to use Wii, uh, Xbox Connect for for bowling and dancing, um, uh, Wii Sports, uh, Xbox Connect dancing. I, I think those are great, great opportunities to combine uh, technology and movement. Hey, Noah, I had another question earlier from Ashley, and I think sure. one of the other attendees may have answered it, but she wanted to know, do you see that some items aren't returned in the recreation kits? Yeah, I, that's a great question, um, and it does certainly happen. Um, I would say uh, um, uh, from the libraries that I've talked to, um, it happens with less frequency, fr less frequency than you may expect, um, and so, for instance, um, in the state of Virginia, they have uh, um, kind of outdoor exploration backpacks uh, that, you, that, that, that are kind of centrally coordinated by the state library in Virginia, but then they're circulated in every single public library in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So we're talking about hundreds of libraries checking out um, uh, backpacks to contain things like binoculars um, uh, and other kind of hiking outdoor e equipment supplies. Um, and when I was talking with um, the coordinator of that program, she told me that um, uh, I asked that very question, and 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 basically, um, uh, it, yeah, things go missing with less with less frequency than you you may expect. They're, they do occasionally have to go back in and, and do some maintenance. Um, uh, but but they tell um, librarians in Virginia that that you're kind of. Um, on the hook for for making sure that things don't disappear and and there may be a, a charge incurred uh, if if some of the the packs go missing and so um I think they I can't remember exactly what they use but they just uh, just tell people um hey this is a free community resource and take care of it and more often than not uh, people do um but yeah it's definitely yeah sometimes things can go missing I would not advocate for really small things uh, uh, larger items like binoculars uh, are less likely to to disappear um, let's see just looking at the chat now no I have one from Lori uh, sure. Lori Durbin she says she has trouble finding instructors for yoga and Zumba she wants to know does anyone else use videos instead of live instructors yeah, I, yeah, that's a great question, um, and and I I definitely know um, li a lot of libraries that use use videos um, uh, rather than live instructors, um, and I think some of you may be uh, uh, actually participating with me in, in a study that I'm I'm getting ready to to do with a, a collaborator in California where we're actually going to try uh, video-based uh, exercise classes for older adults um, in rural public libraries. Um, and I know that that's uh, especially common in rural libraries. I've seen especially in Virginia, um, uh, places like Galax, Virginia, Martinsville, um, uh, South, Boston, South Boston, uh, lots, I've seen lots of rural libraries um, using exercise-based um, or video-based exercise. Um, classes that are, that tend to be chair based uh, so you're sitting in your chair and, and less likely to injure yourself uh, librarians um, almost always participate in the class so that there's a librarian in the room just to make sure um, uh, people are being safe um, but um, yeah I see lots of video based um, exercise classes um, and a great resource for video based um, uh, library programs. Um, I want to just, uh, I'm going to highlight here in the chat. Uh, so the National Institute on Aging, uh, they've made available a large number of free workout videos that you can use at your library at no cost. Um, and so uh, a lot of the exercises, although they're, they're kind of targeted for older adults, they would definitely be um, applicable to uh, all ages, especially if you're kind of getting, trying to get back into uh, physical activity. Yeah, and I like what Mar uh, Mary or, or Marie says um, of kind of luring people in with the fun, not the not the tough stuff. Um, and I actually think that's that's really what I would say is probably the best attitude to have. Um, and I think this is where libraries can really play uh, a key part um, in this whole uh, physical activity process. I think uh, what I see is more too often than not, um, people get turned off by by the conventional gym sporting culture where they see 
see it as threatening. Uh, they, maybe they don't identify as a jock, um, so they're just not going to be physically active at all. Um, and so if we in libraries can transform the narrative around physical activity, um, uh, make it seem fun and non-competitive, uh, you can just drop in and, and be, be active with others in your community. Um, that's, that's, yeah, so as Marie says, uh, you can lure them in with the fun, not the tough, stu tough stuff, and the next thing you know, they'll be training for their first 5K. So that would, that's exactly the attitude that I, I think we, we should have. Um, and, and Lynn asks a great question. The library seek to educate participants a bit along the way um, with regard to physical literacy, healthy eating. Um, definitely, definitely. I see lots of libraries, uh, um, yeah, in particular, the healthy eating. Um, uh, there's lots of, lots of libraries now that are doing uh, nutrition and cooking classes, um, and I think kind of combining physical activity with, uh, with basic uh, instruction on how to make um, a healthy meal um, at low cost and with little time would be a great uh, great complement uh, to to physical activity Yeah, so Aaron asks a great question. What resources would I recommend to librarians who would like to start teaching fitness classes um and that's a, I think that's a, a really great question. And I've actually heard of um, libraries that now will send some of their staff out to um, go through certification processes so that they can then uh, teach teach uh, things like yoga and tai chi in the libraries. Um, and I don't, yeah, there's lots of different uh, certification programs out there. Um, uh, and I don't want to uh, necessarily favor one over the other. But one, one, there's actually one that's uh, specific to um, two libraries. Um, one of my collaborators, Katie Scher, who recently wrote a book uh, for the American Library Association, she has developed this Stories, Songs, and Stretches uh, um, uh, certification program. So uh, it's a great way to uh, incorporate yoga uh, into your, your youth programs. And, and she's developed a, a certification uh, program that's uh, tailored specifically for librarians who want to incorporate yoga into story time programs. Um, but there's there's uh, the huge array of kind of uh, certification programs for uh, yoga and Zumba and Tai Chi, um, and so that I could I could um, that that may be something uh, if you want to reach out to me I can kind of uh, work with you uh, a little bit more on that one. Um, and there was a question about the slides, um, and I wanted to, uh, if, you, if you didn't get it earlier, the slides are actually available online, uh, so if you wanted me to go back to a particular thing, you can actually download the whole presentation and, and refer to it um, uh, later. And so Catherine asked, uh, do you need extra insurance if you install outdoor sports equipment? Uh, so Catherine, I think that depends a little bit on the, the insurance that your current library has. Um, I've heard of some libraries where um, they basically talked with their insurance company and talked with their city and county government, and, and, and basically the, the advice that they got was that their current insurance would, would, um, um, would be uh, sufficient, uh, but I, I think it depends on, on what insurance you, you currently have. But I, I do know that some libraries uh, that are doing this have been told um, by their legal counsel that their, their existing insurance would cover uh, such new infrastructures. No, we got a question from Kirsten. Uh, she wanted mm -hmm. to know, what about teens? How do you work permission for some other activities when the teens aren't old enough to sign for themselves? Sure, sure. Um, and so uh, th that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, some, I do have some examples of uh, forms uh, where, where the legal guardian um, is supposed to sign the form along with uh, the teenager. So uh, that's, I've seen uh, some, some of the forms on my website. Um, there's specific to, uh, kind of after hours NERF, NERF programs where, where teenagers are invited to kind of um, yeah, play capture the flag in the library with, with NERF guns, um, which has become a really popular teen program in a lot of libraries. Um, and so I can, I can. Uh, so that form is on on my website, uh, and it's basically uh, it just asks uh, the legal guardian to sign um, on behalf of the teen.
And I will also say, I think there's, there's actually a need for a lot more teen-specific programming. Um, in my survey, I asked, uh, I asked librarians, what audiences do you offer these programs for? Um, and teenagers was actually the least common audience. Uh, so after older adults, um, after school-aged uh, youth, after adults. Um, so I think we actually, uh, one of the reasons why I haven't talked too much about teenagers is I see that as a, as a, big, um, a, a big gap. Um, that uh, I, I think we could do a lot more for. And yeah, I see Jenny says that at her library they have backpacks and the binoculars, um, and they've only gone missing once in three years of checkout, not too bad. And, and yeah, I've heard similar things. I think sometimes um, people may initially assume that uh, everything's going to disappear right away. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, if you if you frame it as a community good, uh, people people tend to treat it as such. And I like uh, Jenny is talking about the three hours uh, Just Dance uh, program. And so Angela asks, um, is there any more concern with liability using the videos versus the certified instructor? Um, and so yeah, I, I think that uh, it's going to depend a little bit on, um, on, on the type of program. I, if I were to do a video-based program, I would strongly advocate for something that's chair-based uh, so that people are sitting in their chairs the entire time that they're, they're exercising. That tends to make, um, make things a little bit safer. Um, you also uh, may want to uh, ask, is this video an evidence-based program. Uh, the Go for Life program is evidence-based, um, uh, and there's some some video-based programs that actually have insurance that go along with them, uh, like the, the Jerry Fit program. Um, and so, um, I, I think the answer is that it would depend. Um, and we still have. Uh, some time for questions. I wanted to. I I, I rushed through things um, quite just to, just to make sure we had lots of time for discussion. Um, so if you if you didn't have a chance yet to ask your question, please uh, please go ahead and type them in. I'd love to love to hear your thoughts. Is there something that you you'd like to try? Something you did try that didn't go uh, the way you had hoped it would? Um, uh, I'd be happy to uh, try to um, help you brainstorm or troubleshoot uh, something that you may be thinking about doing uh, at your library. I see a, a bunch of people typing, so I'm going to wait wait a, a minute. Uh, I think people may be typing in some things right now. And thanks to Lynn Job uh, from Canada. She's part of the Active for Life uh, initiative in, in Canada. Um, and so she's sharing a great resource uh, from the Sport for Life uh, initiative. There's been, and I, I can't say enough about what's happening in Canadian libraries. Um, I, in Canada, um, in New Brunswick, Alberta, Ontario, there's been a huge incorporation of libraries and into physical literacy um, initiatives. Um, and so I think there's lots of great uh, resources we can, we can use. Um, and draw upon here in the U.S. from our, our colleagues um, in Canada, which is one of the reasons why I made sure to include them in, in my survey. And Lori is sharing a, a new DVD series that she wants to try. Yeah, so that's that's one thing. Uh, depending on on the exercise program, you want to make sure uh, to be to be careful of licensing and copyright issues. Um, and so uh, there are some free um, uh, exercise videos that are out there. So, uh, I, I really advocate again the resource, the free workout videos on the National Institute on Aging website. Um, and some of them have been hugely popular. I guess um, some of the their workout videos have been seen nearly um, 500,000 times. Uh, so they're they're very, despite being free, um, they're extremely high quality. Um, and so uh, you don't necessarily have to rely on uh, using um, videos that would require you to purchase a, a, a public performance license. Yeah, so um, uh, that's that's. A, I, I love this question. Montserrat uh, asked if I know of libraries that are doing scavenger hunts that involve physical challenges. Um, 
And I, I think that's a, a great question. Um, a few years ago, it seemed like lots of libraries were doing geocaching uh, and letterboxing programs that involved, yeah, they're kind of scavenger hunts um, that involved uh, kind of being being physically uh, active, exploring your environment. Um, I've seen less kind of geocaching, letterboxing programs during the last couple of years, uh, but I think there's a, a great opportunity to to kind of bring back some more scavenger hunt uh, type programs and involve physical challenges. Um, one one actually example that I would I, I would share um, uh, is, are people familiar with the kind the the kindness rocks uh, program? It's, it's it's basically where you people paint uh, rocks at their library and then go kind of hide them around the community and then and then you encourage people to go out kind of looking for the rocks. Um, and it, usually the rocks have some sort of kindness message. Um, and, and it's not always framed as such, but I think that's a great way to encourage physical activity, kind of taking these rocks and hiding them around the community and then encouraging people to go look for them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it doesn't always have to be a Zumba class or, or something like that. There's all kinds of other ways to uh, increase physical activity um, that are not, not necessarily what you, what you may first uh, uh, think about. Oh yeah, and another great example, walking tours, um, and, and thank you Martha, that's another, I mean there's just so many examples uh, of programs that you can do, it's hard to fit them all into one presentation, um, but uh, especially now that Halloween is coming up, I've been seeing a ton of libraries that are doing uh, walking ghost tours, uh, so kind of librarian-led uh, ghost tours that where, where people are walking around the community and learning about um, uh, buildings that may or may not be haunted, uh, but but also, um, yeah, it combines local history and kind of uh, Halloween and walking. Um, and so I love the kind of uh, walking walking tour um, uh, that's, uh, yeah, similar in some ways to the walking book club. You're taking a, a program that you may have already offered, a local history program, and, and putting um, a walking component into it so that it, it, it also involves physical activity. Yeah, and Jenny, it sounds like does something similar. And I don't know if we have any of the librarians from the McCracken County Public Library in Paducah, Kentucky, but I saw that they were doing uh, actually a, a bicycle tour of a local cemetery. So um, over the summer, the librarians down in Paducah, Kentucky, uh, they actually uh, did a did a bike tour of a cemetery because some cemeteries are pretty pretty massive, as I'm sure many of you know. So they actually bicycled around the cemetery and stopped uh, throughout their ride to kind of talk about um, various local history things. Pokemon walks, uh, yeah. So Martha, that's another great, a great way to kind of use technology and kind of, um, uh, yeah, pull upon something that's popular today. And it looks like the discussion may be, may be dying down a little bit, um, but I'm, I included another link to uh, the slides if you want to access them. Uh, and I also uh, really encourage people to email me. Um, I am available uh, working on this um, all the time, basically. This is my main uh, area of focus. Um, and so if, if, you, if you're thinking about trying something new, um, more likely than not, I'll be able to connect you to a librarian that's already doing what you want to do. Um, and so please reach out to me, um, and I'd be happy to try to connect you to someone. Um, uh, and yeah, I think there's an after seminar survey link, um, which uh, I'm not sure if Kimberly, um, if people will get that when they exit out. Um, and yeah, if you're, um, make sure to download your um, LEU and fill out the survey. Great, yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for, for participating and attending. Um, and I look forward to hearing uh, from you in the future. Thank you, Noah. Really appreciate you um, sharing all of this knowledge with us today. And I thank all of the attendees uh, for for hanging out with us today. Um, I'll be here for a few more minutes. So um, again, the survey link is in the chat box. Please fill that out. 
And also you have one, you have two versions of the LEU. Uh, make sure that you download that um, and print your name and print, uh, yeah, print your name and then print it out. And then um, if you have any further questions, you have my contact information as well as Noah's. So thank you all. And we appreciate you hanging out with us today.